How's it going everyone? Chad from Wonderspark Puppets here and today we finally arrived. That's right, we're going to be doing two puppets at the same time. Are you ready? Woo! It's super exciting. So, you've been following the videos thus far. You're feeling pretty confident with your uh, paper puppet or whatever puppet you're using, right? Feeling like, yeah, we can walk, we can talk, mm -hmm, we follow everything and we're great. Now, we're going to use our other hand. <laughs> so your non-primary hand it's going to take a little bit to get it up to speed but when you switch hands you will notice it feels a little bit different now we'll give you some exercises to strengthen your performance with your non-primary hand so we can use two at once the first thing we do is to stretch all right if you haven't watched that stretching video yet now's the time stretch both hands because if you're only focused on one hand for forever this hand is not going to be as flexible or as strong or as able it's just kind of like uh if you broke your leg and put your leg in a cast and then worked out really hard with you know your entire body so one leg is totally swole and then the other leg when you take it out of the cast is tiny because the muscles haven't been developed that's we want to avoid that scenario and make sure that both your hands are super strong so stretch with both hands get their movement right up to speed. Make sure you can run a seam with just your non-primary hand and have it be good, right? So if you're doing a, if you're doing a character with this hand, like doing an entire scene, switch on to this one and do the same exact scene, right? Can you do it? <laughs> do not attempt two characters at once until you get uh, lefty or righty or whatever your non-primary hand is up to speed, okay? Because we don't want uh, one character strong, and then this one kind of like, kind of middling or, or weak. All right, now let's move on to some puppet exercises. Okay, everyone. Hi. Our first puppet exercise is going to be entering and exiting. All right, so we're going to use, woo! Oh, hi there, a little guest appearance. So we're going to be entering and exiting while one hand moves and the other hand does nothing. It is harder than it seems. So here we go. First one character enters, stops. Then the second character enters, stops. Right? Then the first character exits, while this character does not move at all. Okay? And then this character exits. It's harder than it looks. This hand, or whatever hand, uh, is not moving has to stay extremely still while this hand does all kinds of shenanigans right so if we're dancing with this hand we're looking down up all over the place entering and exiting while one hand is totally frozen that's what we're going for with this exercise okay and like I said it's tough we, what we want to make sure to not have happen is when this character is doing stuff, this hand is kind of dead or it's kind of like, uh, like it's not looking where it should. It needs to look either straight out or actually it needs to look at this puppet while it's doing its thing. And we'll talk about that in a second. So we're entering, we're exiting one after another. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Try that exercise out. Now. Exercise number two is looking at each other, okay? So while this character is talking, it's moving. Mm -hmm. There's no mouth on this puppet, so we say when this character is speaking, it has to be moving in some way. If I'm talking and neither character is moving, the voice could be coming from either character. <laughs> so keep that in mind, all right? If I'm talking, I'm gesturing at all times. Now. Here's the exercise. One character looks at the other. This character counts to five. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five. And always end by looking at the other character. And then this character counts. One, two, three, four, five. I'm trying to give it a little different emotion. And then looks back over. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three four, five, look, and at the end of each sentence, each number, you have to transition to looking at the other character so that they can do it. If you say one, two, three, four, five, look, 
<laughs> not as good as one, two, three, four, five. So the last thing they say turns so that we're now focused on this character. Does that make sense? So here we go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. All right. Now, number three, huh, we're going to do a dance-off, and it's the same exact concept. Put on some fun dance music, and in a real dance-off, let's say at some real serious clubs, one character watches the other while they dance. So we're going to dance. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. That's right. Bam! Top that. Okay, I got this. Boing, 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 boing. And top that. Peachy, 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 peachy. Head swinging. Woo, 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 woo. Top that. And so on. Have a dance off between your two characters. Remember, at the end of their dance, they need to look at the other character. And this character needs to look at the audience. Got it? Okay. Now. Our last exercise for today is walking together. Because while these characters are on screen, they're, uh, one is not always just frozen, right? They're both moving at the same time. So let's have them walk together, all right? And I'm gonna swing my arm, that's right, turning away from the audience for a minute so that they can walk like this. Now, if they are completely mirrored and walking, it looks kind of funny. So we want to make sure to vary it up a little bit. Uh, make sure that they're walking in different ways, okay? Based on what their character is. Maybe one is swinging their hips around while the other is kind of walking in a huh, uh, like an angry kind of way. Try and vary it up. Have them walk together. Maybe they start back to back and then walk away from each other. Try some different walks with both of them. Make sure and one character doesn't start to do this <laughs> as they're walking together like, oh, no, 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 no. Remember, these figures have to stay uh, good with their movements. Like, they have to stay the same exact height. One can't be smaller. One can't be way too high <laughs> where you can start to see your arm or something like that. Make sure that they stay at the same exact height and that their movements stay good while you are performing them, okay? Now I'm gonna jump out for one second so I can show you what I'm doing when I'm looking at them. So when I'm inside and I'm performing two at once, your eyes can't split into different directions, right? You can't be looking at them at the same time. So while this puppet is, let's see, this puppet looked over there for this puppet to speak, I'm now completely focused on this puppet. If you're a good puppeteer, you always look at the puppets that you are performing, right? But what if they're both doing things at the same time, right? What if they're entering or looking around? There's no way for you to look at one and the other at the same time. So we kind of use uh, our peripheral vision. If I have two characters up at the same time, I'm not looking at one or the other while they're both doing things. I'm looking right in the middle between them and then using my peripheral vision to look kind of over here and kind of over there at the same time. You have to like, it's not about like bl blurring your eyes like a magic painting or something, but I'm kind of looking straight down the middle, not looking at one or the other, and I'm just making sure in my peripheral vision I can see what they're doing, but I'm not actually looking at them. Does that make sense? Normally, if you're a good puppeteer, you always look at the puppet that you're using, that you know, you're manipulating so you can see what you're doing. But if you have two characters and they're both moving at the same time, you can't just look at one or else this one, if I'm looking over here, I have no idea what this looks like. <laughs> this could look like anything and that's bad. You want to at least have some of your vision covering both of the puppets at the same time. Okay? So thank you so much again, everyone, for joining me on this very advanced part of the technique. Uh, join us next time, and we're going to be talking about some more heady and advanced stuff. Thanks for staying with us. My name is Chad from Wonderspark Puppets, and we'll see you next time.